Hello everyone, today I am solving this problem minimum number of steps to make two strings anagram. And let us start by actually understanding what are anagrams. Suppose you have two strings and if those two strings have the same characters but ordering may be different or can be same then these strings are known as anagrams. For example, A, B, C, D, D and let us take another string D, D, a, B, C. Now both of these strings are anagrams because they have same characters, right? Two D's and two D's here, single B, one A, one C. So therefore I can say that these two strings are anagram. So in this question we are required to actually make two strings anagram if they are not and tell how many steps were actually required to make two strings anagram and to do this we can replace any character of one string to another character so we are given two strings one is a string s and another string is a string t and we can choose any character of a string t and we can change it to any other character so how many steps were required that is something that we are required to return and that is our answer so for example if I have two strings A, B, C and another string B, A, D. In this case if suppose that this is string is S and this is T. In this case I can simply see that B and A are present in both the strings therefore I won't replace them but this character D is not present in this string S and therefore I can replace it and make it C therefore making S and T anagrams and it is also stated in the question that the length of S is equal to length of T so this actually makes things easier for us because now we don't have to remove any element from T or add any extra element to T to make it an anagram of S so if I ask you how many steps are required to make these two strings anagram of each other? Well, the answer is zero because these two strings are already anagrams. Okay, so now let us discuss the intuition to solve this problem. And simply we have two strings S and string T. And if there are any characters which are present in T but not present in S, then definitely I am going to replace all those characters and those characters the number of those characters are actually my answer suppose that A, B, C, R, J and J, J, A, B, C now if I start from J I can see that it is present in S so there is no need to increase any value of my answer and again I move forward to this j but this j is already taken and there is no extra j so definitely I am required to change this character to some other character. So whatever my answer is it increases by 1 therefore it becomes equal to 1. Again we move forward and we see that a is something which is already present in the string and therefore I will remove this character as well and answer does not change. Again we move forward and this time we are at B. Now B is also present already so I remove its existence or its count as well and again I will move forward here and again I see that this character is also present so I remove this as well. So after passing these five characters I know that answer is one because there is only one character which was this one which is required to be changed in some other character and we can simply see that what is that character this character is simply R. So J needs to be changed into R and we will be done with this question. So we are actually required to maintain the number of characters that are present inside these strings and we are good to go. So now I hope that you have understood the logic to solve this problem and now I will show the working of this example and if you have already understood how you can solve this problem then please try and solve it. Otherwise now I say that we can solve this problem using a map. We will start by actually counting each character in this particular string S. So 
first we encounter an L. So the count of L is 1. So we have these many characters in the string S. And now I'll start actually parsing the second string which is a string T. And I see a P which is not present in this particular array. So answer increases by 1. And suppose it was 0 initially. But now it has become equal to 1. Again I move forward and I encounter an R which is something not present in the given string S. Therefore again answer increases. Again I move forward and I come to A. I see that there is no A present. So again answer increases by 1 and it becomes equal to 3. Again we move to the next character which is C. But C is present and as we are mapping this C to this particular C. Therefore the number of C's are reduced and it becomes equal to 0 as it was 1 previously. Again we will move forward and I come to T and I see that there is one T present and therefore I will make it count equal to 0 as well. Next I will come to I and there are no I's present therefore the value of answer increases by 1. Then I come to this character C and as we can see that there are no more C's and therefore answer again increases by 1. Finally I'll go to the last character to see that it is also present and its count is 3 so I'll make it count equal to 2 and as this was the last character there is nowhere for us to go any further and therefore this is our answer which is 5. So this is how we are going to solve this question and now it's time to code the solution. So the first thing I need is to count the number of characters and for that let us create an array of 20 of length 26 that is from a to z let us call this ar and its length is 26 and here i actually made every value of ar equals to 0 because currently we have no instance and for item or actually I should say character in string s I am going to a r of character minus a that is if the current character is b b minus a is 1 that is store the number of occurrences or change the number of occurrences at the index 1 and this increases by 1 and that's it for the string s. When string s is passed, the next step is to pass the second string t. But before that, answer is equal to 0. Again, for every character in t, if a r of this present character minus a is greater than 0, in that case I am going to decrease it by 1 else that is if it is equal to 0 then answer increases by 1 finally I am going to return the answer and that's it now it's time to run the code accept it let's submit this accept it so that's how you solve this problem and I hope you understood the logic so I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.